Uh, next, I'd like to um, introduce uh, Adia Bey and Julio Marquis uh, from the United Nations Forest and Agriculture Organization. Um, Adia Bey works as a geospatial analyst for FAO in Rome. She studied anthropology in Columbia University and environmental management at the University of Oxford. Before joining FAO, she worked on forest monitoring and forest carbon accounting in Nigeria and Madagascar, participatory GIS in indigenous communities in Guatemala, Cameroon, Liberia, and Uganda, and providing GIS support for UN disaster assessments missions in Nicaragua and Madagascar. And Julio Marquis has a background in microbiology, agronomy, and remote sensing. Um, experience in field management of emergency projects with NGOs in, and the UN in Kosovo and Iraq. Um, he's now dedicated to geospatial analysis for the European Commission and for the FAO. Um, he says he's a repentant expert of geospatial commercial products and now an avid evangelist of free and open source solutions. <laughs> All right, so please join me in welcoming Idea and Julio. Hi, everyone. Um, first, I'd, I'd like to sort of thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be able to share our work with you. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about FAO, um, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. And I'll tell you a bit about the context of our work. And then Julio will tell you more about the free and open source software that, we've, that our team has developed at FAO. Um, how it's used, how it draws upon amazing tools from Google like Google Earth Engine. Uh, and then I'll tell you a bit about some of our achievements thus far and how we'd like to work with you. Um, so uh, FAO was established in 1945 um, as a specialized agency of the United Nations. It has three main goals. Uh, the first is to eradicate hunger and food insecurity. Uh, the second is to uh, eliminate poverty. And the third is to promote sustainable management and utilization of natural resources. Um, it's in the context of this third goal that FAO has been working alongside UNEP and UN Development Program to implement UN RED, a program to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation and forest degradation. Uh, our particular project is working with 20 countries uh, in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Oceania uh, to, to use free and open source software to assess their land use, their land use change, deforestation, reforestation, um, in a manner that's adequate, consistent, uh, complete, transparent. Um, this, this type of reporting, this type of land use assessment, it's geared toward uh, supporting countries in their national reporting to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, the UNFCCC, it's an international treaty that was established 20 years ago um, with the ultimate aim of, of stabilizing greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the atmosphere at a level that would prevent dangerous sort of impact on climate systems. So Julia is going to tell you a bit more about how our software supports national monitoring um, and reporting to the UNFCCC. Yeah, thank you. So good morning, thanks to the friends from Google Earth uh, Outreach, Google Outreach uh, and for the opportunity. My name is Julio, uh, luckily I don't have an American accent, you'll be pleased by that. And I'm going to walk you through the marvels of Colette Earth. So as the name suggests, Colette Earth builds on uh, Colette, you don't know it, but it's uh, open source software from, from FAO for data collecting and storage, and uh, Google Earth and Earth Engine. So since we all like videos, here is one. It is part of the Open Forest Initiative, a set of free and open source softwares for data collection, monitoring, forest monitoring. And it builds inside Google Earth. It starts from there, and then it connects other components from Earth Engine. So this is the interface for a point sampling analysis of forests in this case. There is an HTML interface inside Google Earth for data visualization and entry. 
At the same time, the, as I was saying, the software is connected with Earth Engine and also Bing Maps. So we have from Bing Maps, Bing Maps uh, other very high resolution imagery. And from Earth Engine, we have a whole set of possible uh, data sets, uh, in satellite imagery for uh, analysis and uh, historical uh, uh, review of the um, data sets. Eventually, the user can uh, compare these uh, uh, data sets from time zero and time one and uh, enter their data in, uh, in the interface of co collectors that you see here below. So it is a plugin from uh, uh, inside Google Earth. Here you, see, you can see a grid of points uh, for the uh, forest analysis in the, in the country. The grid can be fully customized. And uh, the classification we use actually is double-sided. It couples from one side, on one side with the IPCC categories and on the other side with the national classification. So the classification can be used both at the international and national level. This is an example from uh, one plot. You see the first two, if you can see it, the first two groups uh, are the IPCC categories and subcategories. Uh, and those uh, uh, groups are common throughout the, all the versions we build uh, for any country where we operate. Uh, down below, each country decides what kind of classification they want to use. The interface so far has been customized for uh, many countries and it is in English, French, Spanish and we are working on the Cyrillic one. So, the, um, let me proceed. Uh, the connection with Earth Engine is very important because the use, I mean, our users are not remote sensing experts. Our forest uh, people, forest people, forest experts from the different countries and, uh, but with this tool actually they can uh, see their land in Google Earth with very high resolution imagery, recognize it, go to, collect, uh, to Earth Engine, recognize the same features and eventually analyze them. In uh, Earth Engine, we have uh, a geosync with uh, Google Earth and Bing Maps. So at each plot, uh, the user moves, the other two windows uh, are uh, synchronized and they move uh, at the same time. Two hours more, thank you. <laughs> So this is a system of the applications. Um, the Google Earth for the data, uh, very high resolution data. Earth Engine, at the same time, there is a, a background in either SQLite or PostgreSQL for data storage. But all this is a flat table. So in order to, sorry, in order to actually analyze data, we connect it to another free and open source software that is Saiku. And this is a sort of pivot table from um, like Excel, but uh, on steroids. And from here, we can have uh, aggregations, uh, charts, uh, export these charts and in, uh, in aggregations uh, in several formats. And for example, this is a land use change matrix for a country. So we recently launched Collect Earth publicly at the World Forestry Congress, and it's now available online. You can all download it and begin working with it. Um, thus far, we've been working with national governments uh, to do their land use change assessments. Um, and we've completed sort of capacity building sessions in nine countries, and we have 11 more to go. Uh, and two countries have completed their national assessments. It's Papua New Guinea and Mongolia. Uh, but now we are, um, we're at a point where we would like to begin working with other organizations, with other NGOs, with other academic groups um, that might be interested in using this software um, to do sub-national scale assessments or even national assessments of their own. Um, so you can visit the Open Forest website at www.openforest.org and you can learn more about Collect Earth or other free and open source tools that have been designed at FAO. We have got also social, so we are on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And please appreciate the efforts because many of us are not so social. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Quick question. So, um, one application that I'd love to find some code for uh, would be monitoring. Uh, meadows and wildlife, uh, wild spaces, but not forests, for uh, 
uh, uh, wildflower and plant populations to find out when they peak, uh, what kind of uh, uh, temperature and rain regimes uh, are best for them and things like that. And so th I guess the question is, uh, how flexible is this? Can we look for different colors uh, through time, things like that? So, so far the applications have been really diverse in, in time. I mean, when the, we apply them and in space in the different countries we apply them. It is really customizable and it has to be a compromise between what you want and what is available. I mean, when uh, Keyhole in 2005 uh, came out, I thought, uh, all right, I have to find another job. Then I realized that actually that could boost my job and uh, let's say, let me deliver the information to people that were not actually in the uh, remote sensing domain. A couple of years ago, when Earth Engine came out, uh, I thought again, all right, I have to find another. But then I thought that I already thought this in, in 2005. <laughs> and actually, also Earth Engine helped me to deliver this information to many more people, so to arrive to your question, it depends on what kind of uh, on what kind of data sets you want to rely on. Because, for example, for forest, a uh, Landsat can be enough. If you're looking to uh, more specific uh, information or features or whatever, maybe you can find some other data set that is available inside the Earth Engine. Or you, can, you could add uh, your information inside Google Earth as KML and analyze that information. And then you customize, I mean, we or you together, we customize the sampling grid of points according to the density you want, according to the stuff you have, according to the skills of the stuff. It, yes. It can be done, it, it depends on exactly what is the application, but we can, uh, let's say, talk in detail uh, later. Uh, Thank you. you.